I finish up um, on the 22nd, the day after the Oaks. The Oaks, the weekend here is Saturday, Sunday. So I finish up on Sunday, which is um, making the exit before Galway. I have this uh, chat. Uh, you're a Dubliner by birth, but you've been a Kildare man for a long, long time. Fill us in on the early days. Well, the very early days was uh, I, um, I finished up uh, going to Swords Technical School at 16 and uh, there was nobody in the family involved in racing or anything, but um, I used to make the annual visit to the, or the daily visit to the bookmakers in Swords and often have a bed here and there, but uh, going to Fairy House as a young fella, I just got bitten by the bug of racing and I used to ride ponies at home with a nearby neighbour, so the earliest opportunity I had was to come to the Curragh. And uh, I came to Charlie Wells just around the corner here from the race course in 1964. So when you were with uh, Charlie Wells, you had ambitions to make it on the track rather than be talking about horses? Well, that was, that was the, the early ambition. But um, in those days, uh, I signed on as an apprentice. I was, I was never light, even though I wasn't too big, but I was never very light. And uh, I signed on for uh, three years that time. And uh, I actually rode in a race here at the Curragh and won in Baldoyle. Um, Johnny Murta, as we call him, older Johnny Murta now, he actually rode in the race here at the Curragh that day. And a chap out of McCreary's, Chris McCormick, rode the winner. Uh, here I finished fifth, which I thought was an achievement because he was just a horse I looked after myself. But uh, I didn't have many, many other great spins. And take us from there to the, the commentator. Well, you should know about that because uh, you got me started with the audition in uh, Leperstown and uh, I used to get into bits of trouble for doing my party piece. I, I couldn't sing a note, but I used to always record old races and as plenty of lads now do as well. And if there was a big race a month or so ago, Tommy Murphy or Tommy, late Tommy Carberry, they'd always be egging me on, come on, get up there and do that race. And that was my bit of a party piece. So. Uh, I actually never knew if I could really do it or not, but um, I did that audition in RTE um, at Leperstown and the first race that I did was a couple of races before your father went on air with At The Races and the race was actually won by one of Mick O'Toole's horses uh, that landed a bit of a gamble, a horse called Rotten, so I got away with murder in the, in the uh, interview and uh, it went well and within a couple of weeks then when your father was manager of Leperstown, there was always a vacancy at Leperstown. And uh, I did the Leperstown chase in 1971 that Sean Barker won on Seabrief in the Duchess colours. So that's a good while ago. And then so you've been the main track commentator since the mid 80s. Yeah, well, um, uh, 80, 86, um, around the country, you know, 210 days a year. Uh, a lot of travel, an awful lot of races, and uh, now it's now it's coming towards the close. And the commentating situation, facilities-wise, etc., over the years, has changed a lot. Well, um, some of them have, and some of them haven't. Uh, a lot of them are nearly the same as when uh, uh, we started. And um, I mean, the current now is in transition here at the moment. I mean, uh, I won't know what the new place will look like, but. Uh, we're, we're here now at the moment and it's been pretty difficult. I mean, the sun is the biggest factor here because there's no backdrop. But uh, around the country, I suppose, a lot of the vantage points are satisfactory, you know, but uh, I think some of them could be better. And what tracks have uh, proved the most difficult for you? Do you have favourite tracks and ones that you're not that keen on? Um, well, I, I actually like, um, I like here and I like Leperstown. They're my two favourites. I think Ferry House can be very difficult, uh, particularly the National. Uh, they get a long way away from you. Uh, Nace is close by, it's a good fair track. Also get a bit away from you there at Nace. And uh, a lot of the country tracks, they're short in circumference. So you can handle them handy enough, you know. As far as sort of the old days, the black and white days as we call them, sort of it was all about binoculars. Things have improved with monitors and everything since. Yeah, well, it's, there's total transformation in the last number of years with the Raisin Post introducing the colours, where uh, it's a big advantage to have that uh, as a learning process beforehand, and you can get them up now on computers and whatever. 
and the race cards are in colour um, and the turf club have crashed down on changes of colours where uh, in the early days you had to watch every horse going to the start to make sure they had the right colours but since they clamped down on fines um, they have to wear now the colours that are registered or there is a fine so that made it a lot easier. The early days in the point of points was mayhem. You wouldn't know what anybody would have going down to the start. But um, no, there's there's so much difference now. But I still trust the binoculars. Um, I don't think you, you don't get a real good picture from the monitors and bit of both. Bit a bit of both. You can you can try and marry the two together. But I I tend to trust the binoculars a hundred percent. Sad or satisfied at ending up. Ah, I suppose a bit of both. Um, you know, when you're at this, uh, it just comes second nature. Where are you going tomorrow? Face the car in the right direction and head off to the races. I, I, the only thing I'm, I'm a bit sort of concerned about is how I'm going to adapt uh, to not being going, not being working. Um, haven't been over in love with the game for the last 10 years. Um, it's tough going when the, mid, the big day meetings are good, but uh, day-to-day meetings, you know, with very few people there and it's hard work to get motivated and things like that and uh, I, I won't miss it in a way and then of course I'll miss it because I'm not doing it but how I'll adapt I'll have to see. Did you suffer much from nerves during the years? No, no, never, never, never worried, never worried a bit about nerves to be honest. Um, whether I got it right or wrong I'd still go back up the next race and just melt away. Uh, no, I have to say that wasn't a problem. 